always loved the pots that were on the shelves in old kitchens. But it was only when I started actually working away with clay that I wanted a kind of classical form that I could use as a canvas. I think I will possibly in five years or six years time come back to the handi lotas and chattis but take them into a different dimension both in the pot profile as well as in the surface textures. A lota is a pouring vessel, chatti is it's a much wider vessel and it's used possibly even in cooking. Handi is a water storage vessel. I don't I think uh, pots as symbols in my consciousness. It's possibly a completely visual thing with me. I think I'm mad about every process. I absolutely love the initial ideas that you get and the ideas come from anything. And then those initial idea of a form begins to germinate. From that I would possibly start to develop how to nudge the series into its different aspects. And it may be something to do with the graphics and the textiles that I've done, but I enjoy drawing the form now from the initial maquette that I've made. And then I take it further by putting overlays of tracing paper onto the initial drawing that I've done and move it along and nudge it until I feel that I've got various shapes that form the series. Once that's done, that's very exciting, that process. It really is, because that's the embryonic ideas that you're trying to set out for the series of shapes that you're doing. To me, grouping is very important. It's possibly part of the, the choreography of Indian dancing. A lot of people have asked me, why do you actually indent? Why couldn't you just use paint onto the surface? And the answer to that is that it doesn't give that edge to the line, that clarity. If you painted onto a surface, the line would be fused. You wouldn't get that lovely frisson. But now I tend to use, because the worker seems to be getting much more painterly, um, much more layered, I tend to use anything that I can actually make an indent and a mark that I feel will interpret the surface texture that I want to put onto the pot. So things like meat tenderizers, violin strings, anything that I can lay my hands on that will give me the indentation that I'm looking out for. I make my own slips and you mix it and that becomes your paint. To me that is the painterly part. Sometimes you can use it almost like a watercolorist would use it to put layers of very delicate slips onto it try and get the feel almost of a watercolour or a Degas pastel. But now I seem to work with the slip in a completely different way. I'm using slip almost like a pastel onto the surface and indenting through the slip and infilling it. So it's become much more painterly. Now, to the latest work, I'm really taking it to a degree that I'm really passionate clay quite a lot. And that gives you the lovely texture that I'm really struggling to get onto the surface of the clay. People that do glazes really go into the deep of how to get the best from the different colours. But with slips, it's already done in a way. You buy different colours and then you mix it into the clay. I always felt right from the word go that glazes were not for me because I think you need a lifetime of experimentation to make the glazes work for you in the way you want to interpret. While I felt with slip, I could carry on using my past experience as a painter to use it to work from. I was always a potter in a hurry. Because I came into potting so late, I wanted to express what was in me quickly. Balance, I think, has always been a very, very important aspect of my building. Perhaps that is part of the, the profile that I need to have for my forms, that slight edginess. So I work hard when I'm actually building the form to get that right balance. When I paint, I don't quite know where to stop, but with 3D, that dimension, I seem to know when a form is complete with the 
12 apostles, I think I have exhausted now the different permutations, shall I say, of that one form. And then you're ready to go on to the next form that you want to take to its final permutation. So I do think, yes, you, you do know when you've reached the end.